All right. So, hey, Jaron, do I say hey. your name correctly? It's Jaron, yeah. Jaron, yeah. sorry, sorry. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I, I experienced the same thing with my name. It's Aharon, but everybody's like Aaron. So it's like, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know that feeling where you're like, yeah, close enough. Yeah, close enough. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so like right before we started recording, we started talking about action and um, and about your experience. But please uh, uh, introduce yourself if you can. Sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is Jaron Bray. Um, I've been involved in, in martial arts since I was, I mean, five years old. Uh, I, I started acting like in, uh, in school plays and stuff like that around the same time. Um, I did like traditional martial arts, you know, Taekwondo and, and karate and, and chap, uh, traditional Japanese jujitsu up until like middle school. I think like I, right around that age where you kind of decide you're too cool for everything you did as a kid. And I, I dropped out of all the martial arts stuff in like the seventh grade, eighth grade. And I just got super lucky that like a series of random events uh, led to me kind of falling back into martial arts. I had always gone on runs with my dad. He was a, he was an army guy, like 25 years in the army. So he always had me running, running, running. So when I got to high school, the ninth grade, uh, the only thing that they could convince me to do was the cross country team. Cause I was like, well, I like running. I, I'll at least do that. I'm not too cool for cross country team. And it turns out that uh, our high school wrestling team used the cross country team basically is like preseason training, you know, just, just running, running, running for th uh, three months. And then the wrestling season would start in the late fall. Uh, and so there was like three or four guys on the wrestling team. And I think at the time they were just being like really friendly, but frankly, they scared the crap out of me and they were really intimidating. So they were like, Oh man, you know, you'd be awesome at wrestling. You should come join the wrestling team. But in my head, it was like, you better come to the wrestling team or we're going to be mad. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll show up to the wrestling team. And so, yeah, I, I showed up, I started wrestling and that kind of like reignited uh, my, my love for martial arts. And I wrestled in high school. And uh, the thing that's interesting about wrestling is it, it's like one of the only sports in high school where there's no recreational outlet. You know, it's like you play basketball in high school and then you can like join like a local basketball league or, you know, same thing with like soccer. But when you wrestle, when you're done, it's like there's no recreational wrestling to do after that. And so what a lot of guys ended up doing and convinced me to do was transition into mixed martial arts as a way to to express your wrestling. You know, obviously it's a lot more complicated, but at least you can still fundamentally do your wrestling. So. I got into MMA. I, I fought professionally for uh, five, six years, almost six years. Wow. And then uh, right, right around the time where here in the States, uh, they came, came out with all of those um, studies about brain trauma for football, like the NFL football. Yeah. You know, it wasn't necessarily about MMA, but I saw those studies and figured, you know, if concussions are that bad for you, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Um, <laughs> And then somewhere along the way, I had gotten picked up to do this. Uh, it was like a, a short video or like a music video where there was like this big bar brawl and they just needed lots of bodies. And so it was like a friend of a friend of a friend. I got on this music video and I met the stunt coordinator and I just got really lucky. He had just relocated back to Nashville. I think he had been working out in Atlanta and he just needed people. He, he didn't really know anyone in Nashville. And uh he picked me up onto the team and I trained with him for five, six years. And uh, then he went up to Ohio. He's finishing his doctorate right now. And I took over the stunt team here in Nashville when he left. That was uh, uh, about a year ago, uh, about 14 months ago since, uh, since he left. And I've just been running the team full time. So basically, it's classic. It's it's almost classic. So you got like oh yeah, it's classic. Uh, it's it's. I, I it's, think a lot of stunt people are, are just like uh, yeah. just kids that still play and pretend. You know, yeah. it's like we love doing martial arts as kids, and we were like, oh wow, we can get paid to do this as adults. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's funny how it repeats itself because I, 
you listen to other other uh, stunt performers and stunt directors and stunt actors and you listen how they got into it and it's just like oh yeah i met this person and they liked me and i just continued and so oh, yeah i'm in it and it's like so it becomes a thing there was no it's funny i which kind of makes sense nobody aims to become a person who jumps out of a building while he's burning into a water down right seven down into a swarming pit of snakes while it's right yeah. through. so it's like nobody aims towards that i mean yeah, i mean baby steps yeah it's <laughs> it's amazing so you've been you've been in nashville the whole time uh more or less i grew up in basically like a suburb of nashville it's this town called clarksville it's like 30 minutes outside the city proper uh and when i graduated i moved uh to nashville because the better the better mixed martial arts gyms we're here in Nashville and then uh my agent like for acting I got I got out of Nashville as well nice I haven't been to Nashville yet I heard I mean I haven't heard much about Nashville besides the music but uh well it's, it has a big music scene, country right? music yeah that's what we're known for it, it's a fun town it's a really fun town I, I love living here man the the city's blowing up and uh -huh. so is the film industry along with it so it, it's cool to kind of feel like you're somewhere like at the ground level, you know, they're, they're opening up a ton of new studios. They just passed a lot of big tax incentives to try to get, uh, I think they're trying to siphon off a little bit of the Atlanta film industry because we're only four hours uh, north of Atlanta. And so oh, okay. uh, they're trying to become maybe like the cheaper alternative. Yeah, we have the same thing here. Uh, PI does that, the Prince Edward Island, it's a province uh -huh. in Canada and uh uh, some cities here like Hamilton has tax incentives and Ontario in general has stuff in Northern. So yeah, yeah they, all, they all do the same thing. And so, but you do this full time now, the stunt, uh, you I do, teach yeah. stunting? Like, like, like tell so, me about yeah. that. I, I essentially have like an umbrella of things. Like the umbrella is kind of martial arts, like physical acting, all that sort of thing. And then I just kind of get in where I can fit in. Um, I would say most of the stuff I do right now is either actual stunt work or stunt coordinating, but I do private coaching. Like I, I coach actors here in Nashville. I put on um, seminars here around Nashville. Oh. Uh, and I still do a little bit of like personal training, fitness coaching and um, coaching at um, training camp, which is the, the MMA gym here in Nashville. Oh, so you're fit. Yeah, just trying to stay busy. Just, uh, <laughs> what, what, what kind of seminars do you do? So as someone who, who kind of learned all this stunt stuff while also being an actor, um, I think I, I have a little bit of a perspective as far as like what, uh, what is necessary for an actor to learn, uh, what could be skills that an actor can use versus what are more like stuntman skills or, or stunt performer skills. And so I, a couple times a year, I'll put on a seminar, which is essentially like um, fundamental skills for violence on camera, specifically for actors. And one of the things that I preach to them a lot is, I'm sure you've seen this up where you are as well, is it seems like there's this growing industry of stunt performer actors, where it's like, you know, we have this character, they have three lines, but then they're going to get like, you know, thrown over the bar. And we can hire a day player and then hire a stunt double for the day player. Or why don't we just hire a stunt person that can act and then also can take the hit, go over the bar and land on a crash pad. It's, it's, you know, saves these, these coordinators and these productions a, a big headache. And so uh, I've been preaching to these actors that you're going to, it's going to be a lot easier for you to learn like basics of throwing punches and falling than it is for these like hyper skilled stunt performers to suddenly learn how to act. So you, you have kind of like a, a natural advantage in that situation. Yep. Like there's things that they do that you'll never do, but at least you know how to act and you're not nervous to act. Yeah. I've met some incredible, incredible stunt performers that did things that I like I never would have. I mean, these shockingly uh, you know, pardon the term, but just ballsy things. Uh -huh. and, you know, I talk to them, we go get dinner afterwards and, and the acting thing comes up and they're like, oh, I'd be, I'd be terrified to act. I'm like, I just watched you dive through a, a glass window, but you'd be terrified to act, to do a, to do a three line scene with, you know, a main character. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easier to be physically vulnerable than emotionally vulnerable. May, uh, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, I think that's one of the things that, 
uh, or the biggest challenges as an actor, I guess, that you need to be able to be vulnerable. And most people are yeah. willing to let go of that because it's almost an ego crush. So even though you can jump off a building or whatever, then you cannot do that. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's like the people that are afraid from cockroaches more than the stage. Yeah, or, <laughs> 100%. Or, more death or death. Yeah, and it's funny how much actors aren't able to perform with their bodies and then how much stunt performers aren't able to perform with their mouths, if that makes any sense. Like I've seen stunt people do these like, you know, three part falls where they sell each individual object that they hit like perfectly and then they hit the ground and they're rolling around and it looks like, like, like everyone rushes over when the director says cut, like, are you okay? Are you okay? And they hop up and like, yeah, fine. Like they just perform the hell out of it. But then you ask them to say three lines and it, you know, they can't, they can't put together. And then, and then likewise, I've seen actors that, I mean, they're, they're doing these scenes and they're just killing it. Like you're so enthralled, but as soon as the camera pulls back and you see that they like, they don't even know how to hold a gun, like while they're talking, like the guns just kind of, they're like, they're like Ricky Bobby, you know, like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's crazy. Yeah. As soon as you ask them to do a little like <laughs> physical thing, their acting just goes out the window. So that's what you do with the seminar. You basically try 100%. to amalgamate both, yeah. both sides. Just, yeah. And just uh, something that I, something that I say a lot at these acting seminars is um, learning to be comfortable in someone else's space. I mean, cause I can be doing a scene, you know, like me and you can be doing a scene together where we're getting into an argument and maybe our acting skills aren't as strong as some other actors that could be doing the scene. But if me and you are comfortable getting like right up in each other's faces, I mean, getting like nose to nose and just, you know, just being comfortable taking up each other's space, you know, as stunt performers, that's a natural thing for us. We, we pretend to physically fight. So getting in someone's face is no problem at all. Um, the scene might actually be more powerful coming from me and you with like weaker acting skills on paper than these two like guys who are just killing it but you know they're just they're standing three feet away from each other and you know delivering these lines incredibly but there's not that little like physicality or like implied violence to what's yeah. happening which yeah. i think that helps oh yeah yeah that's uh i mean so you it sounds like you're 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 doing both acting directing and physical directing yeah. All in the same time. Yeah. So I, I'm just trying to get, yeah, just trying to get in where I can fit in. Um, right now, I, I've, the big thing that I've been doing so far this year is transitioning to just like traditional directing. Like, um, you know, kind of, we've done more and more projects similar to like what we did with Prey, where we use a narrative to kind of get us into some sort of action scene or, or some sort of like piece of violence. But as I've gotten more and more comfortable with the directing, the narrative side of things have gotten more and more intricate. Whereas as you saw with, uh, with prey, it was mm -hmm. like, you know, let's keep this simple guy's going to follow a girl around and then eventually the tables are turned. We're now getting into, you know, uh, more involved plot lines, more dialogue, more, more things happening. And before the fight actually starts. Well, it, it shows in, in prey, for example. So prey is a short film that you made this, Last year, this year. Uh, <laughs> we, we made Prey over the course of, uh, of an entire year. Uh, if anyone remembers in the headlines, uh, the bombing that happened in Nashville. Uh, so there was a, it was a big news headline. A guy filled up a crazy person, filled up an RV full of explosives. And oh, I remember it. that. Yeah, he parked it in front of the AT&T building downtown uh, and blew it up. So if you watch Prey... Um, that parking garage where the fight happens is directly connected to the office building that he blew up. So we got like three quarters of the way done with the movie. And I, I remember the specific conversation that we had because the bombing was on, was on December 26th. And we were like, do we want to get these last couple shots this week? We had probably about two days of photography left uh, day and a half, whatever. And I, and I said to the group, we had this big group text of all the crew and the cast. I said, you know what, guys, let's take this week off for the holidays. We'll meet back up next year and finish the movie. And then the day after Christmas, they, and you know, I'm, I, I feel like I'm allowed to complain about it because no one, no one was killed. 
no one was hurt. It was just the, the crazy person who blew himself up. So talk about, uh, talk about bad timing. So the movie ended up getting delayed like another six months while we waited for our location. Wow. So, yeah. and then you had to go back to the same look and make sure yeah. everything looks yeah, the same and the hair is the same and the wardrobe is the same. Oh my God. That was a pain too. Yeah. That, that's, that's, yeah, that sounds like so a pain. You, yeah. If you see the beginning of the movie, that, that one or that we did uh -huh. in the alleyway, that's a, that's a very famous alley in Nashville called printer's alley. It's like a big party spot. Mm -hmm. And the way we were able to get away with that was because it was during the pandemic. And so all of those people that you saw, it was like 90% our extras that we filled out to just make it look What? like a busy. Yeah. We just got all our friends together and just That's kind of awesome. put this thing together. Uh, thanks. And then if you look very carefully, right as there's a bike that comes from the background. Yes. First of all, I'm the guy on the bike and you can't, you can't tell it's me because I have a mustache. And then right as the bike almost hits her in the background, you can see there's this, these, this group of like three kids. They had wandered into the alley and we didn't have any permission to be there. Like all of Nashville was shut down. So we uh -huh. were like, screw it. Let's just go and film downtown. I mean, there's no one there to tell us not to, but these three kids wandered up and we didn't, it wasn't our set. So we couldn't really tell them to go away. Uh -huh. So right as the bike goes to hit her, you can see in the background, there's a kid like, like waving at the camera and like dancing around being an idiot. And I thought he ruined the shot but your eyes are so focused on the bike almost I, later, no. you don't even notice them doing it. It's pretty funny. That's actually a great, uh, uh, like that monkey experiment. You know that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So I, I, I don't recall anything like that. So Yeah, it's like so. magic. Just kind of and I watch it more than once. Else. I watch it more than once. And our judges watch, more, watch it more than once. Oh, nice. Great. That's cool. So, no, we, look, we really like, it's like, First of all, like there's a lot of great camera work there. Like besides the oh. stunts and besides everything, like there's a great camera work there. And oh, and, I appreciate and, that. And our DP really... is like a, he's like an expert at shooting action. He's incredible. I mean, he's like a magician with action. Yeah, and you yeah. could feel it. Like even in that, like so, I get goosebumps right now. Even in that, uh, even in the like little moment, like one of the most impactful parts, and it was filled in the cinema as well, where we screen the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reaction was when apparently it was you so when you pick her up and she uh, brings your head down to the, oh, to yeah, the yeah, railing yeah. right yeah, right before she pushes it. you down the stairs right and you can see the camera moving with it and that, that right. those so it's it's those little things i mean i'm, I'm sorry i'm no no talking he's, about your movie like this but no he's great like that but it's like those little things like this that camera at the character and it's the motion it, it moves with the fist and it doesn't just like static to record it it like that's why it made it so immersive you know yeah. and and that's what that's what made it stand out uh like it's made it stand out more than the other shorts oh I, i appreciate that yeah like i said he he just knows like every little thing to do to enhance like what's already there. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of times you get the opposite problem where you can put together some really, some choreography that you're really excited about. Mm -hmm. But if it's shot in a flat way, it just yeah. doesn't, doesn't transmit on camera. In fact, uh, later that year, I was hired to coordinate um, this fan, this fan film uh, uh, for, for Batman. This guy mm -hmm. does like, professional like hollywood level costumes they're incredible oh, wow. and yeah and he got together with his team i mean they shot the thing on you know like the twenty thousand dollar camera with the thirty thousand dollar lenses they had this whole team they rented out this warehouse and i put together some sequences and uh everyone was really excited about it and um got the got the footage back and mm -hmm. there's definitely some really great stuff there but the director even you know he told me when he sent me this stuff he was like well some of this didn't really turn out like I wanted it to. And I, and I watched the footage and yeah, it's just little, just little things like the camera's not exactly where it needs yeah. to be. You know, it's not really kind of open to the performers like you would want, or maybe it's a little flat when it should be a little dynamic or it's yeah. too dynamic when it needs to kind of settle down. Um, all those little things just make all the difference. It's, I mean, I, <laughs> I feel like I'm uh, I'm uh, like do, a I feel like I'm preaching to the choir when I'm saying these things and B I feel like I'm repeating myself constantly but this is like one of the main reasons I'm doing this project this this film festival like I started it because I felt that there was 
A, there was lack of education about how to do it. And there was lack of appreciation to the people who do it and the experts. And I thought to myself, what, will, what is a better way to do it than to actually make an event that, yeah, that's that awesome. only focuses on that. And it's funny how much more I've learned about it since I started it. And that what you mentioned, it's not that the DOP lacks the DOP ability. It's just that filming action, creating action is so different than anything else. 100%. So different than anything else that you need you need those like so well, for example even like what you're teaching the 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 that you teach actors how to punch or to teach uh, punchers how to act and all those so those little things that it's 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 so under appreciated i would say that it, ah, it, like, it's so like it kind of brings me to my next question to like what is from your perspective, what is lacking in like in the action filmmaking these days? Like what is existing? Because there is a lot of like new coming up and coming uh, directors from uh, Stunt, uh, the Chad Sonowski and, uh, and um, I'm not good with names. My mother's <laughs> name is mother. I'm not, but like there's directors of John Wick, the directors of uh, um, Extraction, the yeah. the well Gavin um, what's his name the guy who made the the raid Gavin Gavin who oh, oh yeah he just did that TV show for the UK yeah um, escapes me as well the Gangs of London um, yes um, yeah. I'm trying to Gavin think of the direct extraction is it Gavin Hood I think it's Gavin Hood something something uh, Sam Gareth. Hargrave Sam Hargrave is the guy from Extraction Sam and Hargrave Gareth, and Gareth Evans yeah. Gareth Evans That's yeah right. yeah yeah not Gavin Hood who's Gavin Hood but no, but going back to my question, although we have these upper coming uh, uh, people from the stunt industry that are bringing, like, that are demonstrating that directing action is a skill, and people like John McTiernan are not existing anymore in, 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 the, in the cinema, what do you think is lacking and what do you think is, like, basically, you're, I'm asking what is your perspective on the action? Sure, industry? yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, I think, I think we're in kind of a renaissance of action right now. Um, I think you're seeing um, really, really. I think I dropped out there. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. There we go. Yeah, you were talking uh, about no, the Renaissance. But to answer your question, yeah, I think we're in a Renaissance of action right now. I mean, there's so much really well done action uh, that I, that I think we just haven't had like we did, you know, like ten years ago. Like I, I think there was a period of like you know, like 2005 to 2015, where it was kind of, eh, you, know, you know, where you just didn't really kind of see stuff like extraction or, uh, you know, see, I, and, you know, I think the, the big thing is uh, you see these stunt coordinators and well, stunt performers who became stunt coordinators, who became second unit directors now get these opportunities to just like fully direct films. And I don't think studios were taking risks like that, you know, 10 years ago, they might've even been taking them five years ago. And so, when you have a coordinator behind the director's chair, I think what you're seeing is an emphasis on the action rather than the action being an afterthought. You know, it's, uh, you know, two characters uh, get into an argument that results in this like knockdown drag out fight, right? And so for these traditional productions, it's like, we're gonna spend all day shooting this argument you know, a million different angles, a million different ways, break for lunch. Maybe we'll even do a couple more pickups after lunch. And then whatever time we have left, let's get the fight. In. You know, whereas I, I think with, with some of these other productions, like, no, the emphasis is the fight. We'll get the argument and then, you know, fine. But the emphasis is going to be on making this fight scene look, uh, look like we want it to, rather than just kind of cram it in however we can fit it in. And then I, I think also having these stunt coordinators in the directing chairs, there's a lot of like solutions to some of these problems that come up that only a, cord uh, a former stunt coordinator would know to like jump to, to like fix problems and save time and like keep things moving. Whereas with like traditional directors, something goes wrong and they go like, all right, just cut it. We'll just, we'll just cut it. We'll just make it, you know, two punches and then we gotta go, we gotta move on. <laughs> you know, unfortunately you, you do see that a lot. Um, at the lowest level and at the highest level, you know, I've been hired to work on just local 
local things here in Nashville and they saved the fight for the end of the day, you know, fight. That's the joke we have on our sun, sun team. The fights at sunset fights at sunset. And that, that <laughs> seems to be how it goes. Um, I mean, yeah, the direct, and the other thing too, is I don't, I don't think directors have an understanding of like how long it takes to correctly yeah. film action. Um, I mean, you could have 30 seconds, 45 seconds of a fight scene. And if you're shooting that, like you should be shooting it, giving it the time that it needs, that could be like a whole half day just to get that 45 seconds. And if that's, that's if things go well, you know, if things were prevised well, if the actors are trained yeah. up, like they're supposed to be trained up, that's like all firing on all cylinders. That's a full half day to shoot a 30 second, 45 second fight scene, you know? And I think uh, directors don't appreciate how long that takes and then they just don't allot enough time for it do you think it's appreciation or lack of understanding because oh, lack, think... of, lack, lack of understanding i think a lot of it is lack of understanding um maybe a little bit of appreciation it just depends on the project you know yeah. i mean i'll be the first to admit that i've coordinated action for stuff before and it was kind of pushed to the side a little bit in, in the moment you're frustrated uh but you know you get the you get things done you, you know every, everyone's on the same team at the end of the day and then I go and look at the project after the fact and I go, eh, the fight, they were right. The fight wasn't really what was important there. You know, it, it, I had this whole thing planned out, you know, we were going to go into the wall and then he was going to throw him down and then he was going to roll him over. And then at the end of the day, it was more about that character interaction leading up to the fight. We only had time for, you know, throw him up against the wall and then hit him. And it still worked. It still worked great. You know, it's like the other stuff would have been nice, but you didn't need it. But then other times, I think the fight is super important and it doesn't, it doesn't get the attention that it needs, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a fine line. Although if you are making action, you need to give. Sure. The time. Yeah. It's, yeah. I think it's, a lot of times stuff that isn't like an action movie is where you see it happen the most where the action gets like pushed to the side, but sometimes the action in a non quote unquote, like in a thriller, you know, it is, super important and it just doesn't get it doesn't really get the the attention that it deserves yeah it's yeah it's interesting it's it's no it's no look it's interesting because like one of the things that stands out most was like two two things a um the the hong kong cinema get into the united states in the 90s oh yeah and the, the, them adapting it and eventually the 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 highest pinnacle of it was Matrix, and from there, there was full adoption from, or at least on the approach on many uh, production. The second one was actually Luc Besson and the French approach to action and the, the build of tension to complement the action and vice versa. Yeah. And it's very different because it's not, it's not like, it's, the, it's, it's not what, at least at that time, the French cinema I don't think it is right now. It's not as uh, testosterone-filled as the, the the American cinema. Interesting. So, so even like if you will watch Nikita or Leon, or even if you watch uh, The Fifth Element, it's not that testosterone-filled. It's very, it's very, it's I, I don't know. It, it just rolls in a way that it builds. Right. And then there was the adoption of that. But then they went over, over overboard with shoot them up and and transporter and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> like we were talking about 2005 to 2015. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's the just to the question you asked me, I, I want to just qualify. It's like your answers may vary because it's just about like what you prefer in action. You know, mm -hmm. for like my preferences, I think you know X Y Z about action. But some people might have completely different preferences to, to what I have. And they think like, oh, oh, I thought I thought action movies were great between 2005 and 2015. You know, it's it's uh, it's just like pref preferred style. You know, I, I enjoy all action, but I, I think I, I describe it as elevated reality. You know, something that's grounded, like um, like Atomic Blonde. Uh, that's yeah. A, that's a nice example. <laughs> like to me, that's perfect. Act. It's elevated reality. I mean, it's uh, very grounded. Just like uh, let's go 120 percent instead of 100 percent. Or extraction, I think, is that same kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, John Wick One, I yeah. think, was great elevated reality. I think we got a little too elevated in John Wick Two and Three. Yeah. Depending on taste, depends on your taste. Some people love that type of stuff. For me, it gets a little too unrealistic. But uh -huh. I, I just want to go and say, like, I'm not the be all end all for action. It's just personal taste. Just personal taste. 
I agree with you, but there needs to be some type of bar. I it's a it's it's an it's it's a discussion I have with many creative people. It's I get it that art is in the eyes of the beholder, but there needs to be like the understanding of or at least the differentiation of bad and good art. Yeah. Right. And something that is almost like there are some there are some things that are under consensus. The 15th, 16th chapel is a great art. The sure. Statue of David is great art. It's many things in the Louvre are great art and many things that are. So there are, there is a hierarchy. And I think in action, there needs to be. So everybody's so like walking on tiptoes about like, oh, it's my opinion. It's a taste, but right, right, right. taste has a lot to do with that type of like hierarchy. And it's, it's very yeah. difficult to say it because you tell it to an artist who put his life, his time, his effort, his his energy, his sweat, guts, and created something, and then you tell him, "Well, it's not good." <laughs> he shudder his world, and it's like, ah. I, yeah, right. no, I, I agree with you. I so like a good example of this is like, um, you take uh, some of those some of those fight scenes that you've seen, like in especially like the earlier Jason Bourne movies, um. You know, like, have you ever, the, there's the one where he's got the guy in his apartment and the phone starts ringing and they start, they start fighting, they run into the blinds and they go in his kitchen. And Yeah, it's the first one with the oh boom guy. God. I think so. It's just, um, if it's the same one we're talking about, I mean, it's just like a million cuts an hour. It's disorienting. I think they even hop back and forth across the 180. I mean, I mean it almost feels like they were just trying to find the fight scene in the edit as mm -hmm. wacky as that sounds. And so you take something like that, right. And then you compare it to like the bathroom fight in uh, the last mission impossible movie with Tom Cruise and Henry Cavill. And then that amazing, uh, something from, I forget his name. So you put those two scenes side by side. I think 99% of people are going to go. Yeah. I definitely prefer this cleanly shot, smooth, well edited, action scene versus this you know jason Bourne cut to death you know and some people will argue that's like a style i've i don't know i've i've seen that be a style choice but i think i mostly see it as a way to hide either a poorly performed or a poorly shot action scene yeah I, I I got nothing to wait on that. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. It, because that's again. But that I think that's that's is that is disappearing. I think the the adoption of uh, uh, geography in a fight, yeah, is becoming more and more understandable. That and you can see it in 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 the actually the best places that it that it's demonstrated. Funny enough, is in the superhero movies. Yeah, and yeah. even if you watch Shang Chi, for example, the the first two thirds of the movie is, is relatively grounded in the fight scenes, mm -hmm. and the coverage of it before everything becomes dragons and CGI, the 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 choreography, the, the camera movement, the whole yeah. the the tension even between the characters is very very professionally done, very well made in in terms of trying to explain the person where is everything. So once we start moving, you will not get lost in the cutting, yes. But you will be like immer immersed in the in the characters. A hundred percent. Did you ever see the? Uh, did you ever see the movie Nobody? Came out like uh, yes. twenty. That's something that I always tell my stunt guys who are starting to get interested in like filming action. Is that's like my number one assignment is watch the bus fight from Shang Chi, and then watch the bus fight from Nobody. Because it just goes to show you, you can do the same concept, like wildly different. And it's, they're both it's fantastic. Yeah. Two completely different things, two completely different goals. And they both went like different ways to achieve those goals. But at the end, you just had two phenomenal action scenes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the main thing. And I think, I think like what you're doing is the, 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 the basis of it, giving people the understanding and like what people like you are doing, they're, they're, uh, your your team is in. Uh, you have a stunt team, right? What's the name of the team? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, um, based out of based out of here in Nashville, we um, we're we're kind of in a, in a in a transition with it right now, just from me having um, taken it over from from the coordinator pr prior to me. 
my mentor basically, but we're, we're still going with, uh, it's ADS Nashville. Um, it's, uh, stunts, na- stunts, Nashville.com is our, mm-hmm. our team website where you can see most of our stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, I actually, yeah. I lost my uh, train of thought. Sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, hey, when I get to start talking about action movies, my brain starts, starts <laughs> the same way. Well. No, I'm the same hey, way. man, it's um, just going to go through my questions. Yeah. Uh, so I always tell people of, most, we, get, uh, we get hit in the head for a living, so we're allowed to forget what we're doing. I actually, so I'm actually not the stunt person. Oh, really? No, you just go no. straight to the uh, like the directing and like coordinating? No, so I, uh, my, 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 my journey is very different. I started as a director and I yeah. wanted to do something and, and I challenged myself to 10 weeks of choreography for it. It was a complete disaster, complete disaster. Oh, but, no. it was, <laughs> but it was the best uh, film school I've ever had. And at the time, the whole idea with the film festival was created. That's cool. And last year, I finally decided it's time. Um, because I, I cannot do action, but I do want to give away, but I love action. I do want to give away and show some appreciation and respect to the genre I love the most. Oh, wow. That's awesome, man. That's yes. even more impressive. The fact that like, you don't necessarily have like a stake in it, but you still want to get out there and, and like share it with the world. That's cool. No, I don't have an actual stake. Although I do want to make it like, my goal is to make action films. So the more I- Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you, so you have other projects coming up right now, right? As a director. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I am learning, unfortunately, I'm learning a lot about post-production and just the <laughs> filmmaking process in general. It is, uh, it is a beast. It is a beast. Uh, I sat in on post-production audio, like picture lock, just doing the audio for uh for prey um for 21 hours we did three seven hour editing sessions for a 10 minute movie i mean it's shocking how involved post-production is so right now we have uh five five shorts that are just in various stages of post-production that we finished holy cow uh yeah we have two finished projects we have ride share and then we have prey which you saw um Mm -hmm. And then we are in pre-production right now for uh, one, two, two, one, two, three, four other shorts. So we're finishing up these five. I mean, some of them, you know, it's uh, some of them need as little as like a pass, a final audio pass or color grade. Others, we do need to shoot like some pickups. Um, ironically, we have one that is waiting on the parking garage to reopen that we shot in to get our, our last couple of pickups. I don't know. Why I keep shooting in parking garages because they seem to keep keep uh, jinxing me. But um, actually, I know exactly why I always film in parking garages because it's a free location that is somewhat of an interesting place to film. Uh, everything we do is either like very low budget or no budget. It's all just bringing people together. That's kind of something that I'm trying to do here in Nashville, which is connect uh, the industry, you know, it's like, uh, I know gaffers, I know DPs, I know directors, I know actors, I know stunt performers, uh, I know sound mixers, but they all like are varying degrees of like not knowing each other. And so I'm just trying to connect as many people as possible because it's just crazy where you talk to these actors and they want footage of them acting for their reels. And so it's like, I'll act for free. I just want the footage. And you talk to DPs and they go, I just want like cool scenes to shoot, to put on my reel as a DP. Mm -hmm. And then a director is like, I want to just practice direct. And you have all these individual people, but because they don't know each other and a film takes so many roles to come together and nothing happens. And so it's like, it's been a process of like connecting all of these different people and kind of creating these like, um, uh, the, these like, you get, you get this for this and then you'll get that like a bartering system among filmmakers where, generally not a lot of money is being exchanged it's mostly like i need this and so you know i've the number of films i've coordinated on for free because uh the director was like a dp for one of my films or the director was like the sound mixer for one of my films or something like that it's just exchanges of services just trying to get things done you know yeah i have a i have a question about it actually because you you mentioned that you work with people from different 
uh, strengths and positions. Yeah. And uh, hey amen. And you gotta and that's that's number one, by the way. In any any person's opinion, consistency always is key. And yeah. the more you do, the more you make, the, the more you can. Hundred percent. Make it. Yeah. And it's something actually that came up in a conversation I had in the past about the difference in teams here in North America and let's say in Asia, which most, even not the highest, but in the, the uh, not 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 only in the highest levels but lower levels as well, the people know all realms of filmmaking, which is editing directing, right. camera, lighting, everything. So everything is streamlined. So if you tell somebody to do one thing, they, they already know the effects of it through, throughout the other elements of filmmaking. So moving forward is way easier. Is it something that you see here happening more, less? Yeah. Or how, how, do, how do you see that? Or like- I, I, think, uh, I think what you're seeing, in my opinion, what you're seeing more and more of is the um director editor dp like one one person like a director editor dp and then they will usually have like one other specialty like maybe they can do like special effects a little bit or maybe they really know how to do post-production audio mm -hmm. or they really know how to color grade or uh you know they can write but but definitely it, de it seems to me that like making a movie in terms of like the technology it's just getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper like every year it just becomes cheaper i mean a camera that was fifty thousand dollars ten years ago you could probably find it used right now for you know four uh four figures um you can i mean you can shoot 4k 24 frames per second on your iphone and so as things have gotten more and more approachable, the, um, the value has been placed instead on the skills. And so the best way to save money on skills is just to teach yourself the skills. You know, I can pay someone uh, $500 to edit my seven, eight minute short film, or I can save $500 and just learn to do it myself. You know, and so I, I think more and more you're seeing guys who... Um, those are like the big three, like like the editor, the director, and the DP. Like I'll hold the camera, I'll direct, and then when everything's over, I'm gonna edit it. And then maybe I'll farm it out to get it color graded or get the audio done or whatever. But yeah, definitely, I think you're seeing a lot more like multi-skilled people. And I think that's important. I think having a good understanding of like what is required of the other positions on set, it makes you more empathetic and it makes for like better teamwork. Yeah. Even just performing, you know, I, I've become a better stunt performer since I've started. I've become a massively better stunt performer since I've started editing action. I mean, thing will teach you hard lessons about stunt performance than sitting in an editing room <laughs> trying to fix a fight scene that you messed up, like you performed it, and there's like a, there you did there was no action into the frame or there wasn't action out of the frame or there wasn't a consistency of motion or whatever it is, when you're the one suffering through trying to fix it in the editing room, that's a lesson that you remember the next time you're on set performing a fight scene. That's, that, yeah, that's, that's the hard part of direct, like editing your own stuff. Yeah. That's the hard part because then, then you, uh, I edited two things that I've made and after that I'm, I'm not editing my stuff. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I don't want to hate my create like my my right. My oh, creations, yes. right? You, watch, so, you watch something so many times, yeah. You you become like indifferent towards it because you've yeah. seen it so yeah. many times. And not just that, that you that. become you become numb to the things that work, and right. you only notice the thing that don't work. And you see it like like yeah. Somebody's like another cut, another cut. It's yeah. it's just annoying and. Uh, like the, the the thing where the girl grabs my head and pray and like slams it into the the. Uh -huh the arm rail that's probably the most consistent thing that i get like commented on about that all those like fight scenes and i remember the first time someone they said like oh wow that was awesome i was like really like i'd seen it so many times that i had just become like indifferent yeah. to that yeah. i was like oh wow like, okay <laughs> cool i guess you know because i'd seen it literally thousands of whop 
bop, whop, whop, like just scrubbing it in the edit over trying to find the perfect moment. You yeah. are a classic director, buddy. We get, we get five <laughs> minutes of celebration and then it's like, I don't care what's next. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. What's I next? treat, yeah. I treat filmmaking just like I treat my martial arts. It's just like repetition and just level up, like keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. You know, I meet so many people who graduated film school and you know you're like oh what are you doing now and it's like oh i've got this little like editing job or you know i run camera and i'm like no but like what are you trying to do and the number of times that i hear yeah, i've got this great script for a feature it's going to be like like micro budget i only need like 20 grand and we can make this thing and i'm like oh twenty thousand dollars holy crap like okay good luck <laughs> like that's a lot of money twenty thousand dollars i mean why don't you just shoot something now for free like just come up it's like right right for your means you know that's what i do right now is i just yeah. what what am i capable of shooting right now what locations do i have access to what people do i have access to as performers and then how do i like pair those up to make something that is hopefully engaging in some way rather than just kind of sit around and think like one day one day one day and all of a sudden you haven't you know, practice your filmmaking for 18 months because you've been sitting around waiting for a budget. Yeah, it's it's almost. Uh, I don't know why it became a cliche to talk about Rodriguez and his book, but oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. write down what you have, write down what locations you have, write down what equipment you have, write down who you know, and then write something that has all of those things and then do something yep. as long as you're doing and it's way more important when you actually make again going back to it it's way more important to do action more because yeah the more you do it the more you edit it the more you see the mistakes you've done in the editing process the better you get oh it's like you know i don't want to do just this there needs to be some type of or i don't want to start right from the movement i want some type of attention building yeah and by the way, who was your inspiration for, uh, uh, like, do you have like, uh, somebody that you look up to when you, when you make action, you try to imitate, you try to... Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I love what the, the Stahalskis have done. You know, like I said, mm -hmm. Atomic Blonde, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I love the way that they did their action in that movie. Um, Sam Hargrave, I mean, he only has the one direct, directing role right now, but he was a uh, stunt coordinator and fight coordinator for, you know, like the Winter Soldier. Soldier. Civil War, and I think he worked on um, Infinity War and Endgame as well. And mm -hmm. like you, those movies, the action in those movies is really underappreciated. I think because they're seen as like, like their own like separate genre. Like it's like superhero movies are separate from action movies, but like the Winter Soldier has some incredible like traditional fight scenes. I mean, just like a regular guy fighting a regular guy at the end of the day. I mean if you're both super soldiers, then you're kind of both on the same level. And so it's both just kind of like a normal fight um, in a way. And so, I, yeah, I love the stuff that they do. I, I've got like an entire folder on my phone of like <laughs> great action scenes. I mean, because I think there's a lot, in my opinion, in my opinion, there's a lot, there's a, there's a ton of good action scenes, but there's only like a handful of really great action scenes for my taste, you know, like that, uh, like I described, uh, like elevated reality kind of action, you know. What are your, what are those action film scenes that you think are the, oh, the yeah. greatest? Sure. So um, the uh, the Winter Soldier fighting Captain America on the freeway in, in Winter Soldier, uh, the bathroom fight from uh, Mission Impossible, I think, seven, Fallout, whichever yeah, one Fallout, Fallout six. is. Six, yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty much all of the fights in atomic bond but particularly that stairwell fight is just unbelievable uh i mentioned the bus fight and nobody uh shang chi fighting uh death dealer and and shang chi was amazing you've got your classics like the subway fight and the matrix uh morpheus and neo doing the training fight in um in the matrix as well which those are both kind of getting into like hyper reality but you know, it's still, um, I, I guess when things become a little too, like a little too Hong Kong, like a little too much of the wire work, like a little too much, like uh, that hit probably wouldn't have gotten that reaction kind of territory. That's where, that's where I, I kind of 
check out a, like a little bit, you know, like maybe lose a little interest, but, mm. um, oh, there's like, there's tons, you know, I, when I say, uh, a handful, I, I guess I mean it like the grand scheme of things. So in the thousands and thousands of like action scenes, maybe there's like a couple hundred that are like great, like really, truly great. Oh yeah. It's, it's very difficult to make a great scene, right? It took, I think it took. I, it's difficult two, to make a great scene. <laughs> It, yeah, it, it's difficult to make a movie. It's difficult yeah. to make a great movie, and it's it's almost impossible to make an amazing movie. And then oh, yeah. above, above all of that, you gotta add the action part. So I think it took was it two weeks of preparation for the final fight of uh, the drunken master? Two? Oh gosh, yeah, that's crazy. If that was only, uh, I, I think it was like for ten minutes they did like two weeks of like. They work with the camera, yeah. and the choreography, and every. Oh, that's yeah, that's a huge one. Is getting the cameraman in there. I mean, yep. like, it, like really good action. The camera guy is he's the third performer. You know, he has to memorize choreography beats with his camera. The same, he has to hit. Uh, he has to hit beats just like the performers do. And in yep. fact, his job is even harder because if I like, if I'm, if I'm like seventy five percent where I'm supposed to be, or if I'm kind of hitting something like 80% of what it should be, that's probably still a savable take. But if the cameraman is like 75% on the frame he's supposed to have, the whole thing's done. Like he's yeah. got to be like 95 to 100% exactly where he needs to be for every single beat yeah. or the whole take is ruined. So I mean, his job is anticipation, anticipation, anticipation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like we've started using a lot more under cranking. Um, for the cameraman more so than for the performers um so we're having like our performers slow down so our cameraman can kind of hit these like really specific beats that we want him to have because it's it's harder on him than it is for the guys doing the martial arts honestly what do you mean what well what which part what do you mean uh when you say under cranking and and allowing them to do you you basically you do go slow motion right Right. So we shoot at 22 frames per second and then uh -huh. we, we play it back at 24. And so typically that method is used to make performers look faster. If maybe they're, they're kind of not rehearsed up enough to like go at a faster speed. Um, but what we've started doing is kind of using, yeah, like we started using more and more complicated camera work and then slowing the performers down. So our cameraman can kind of like keep up doing these like complicated, like hitting these like complicated marks throughout the fight scene mm -hmm. um, and then speeding it back up. So it looks like the camera's like really flying from spot to spot to spot, but it's really just kind of getting sped back up. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I saw, I, yeah. So did you use it for a uh, prey or did you? Use it no, for, uh, <laughs> unfortunately we didn't, uh, we didn't learn that method. Uh, Cause I mean, I'd always known about undercranking, but my, my philosophy was like, well, you know, I was like amateur filmmakers, uh, action filmmakers. The one thing that we have that other productions don't have is time. I have all the time in the world. So my mentality was like, if that's our advantage, let's take that. So we rehearsed Prey. Uh, that actress, Tiffany, she's incredible. She came up to me uh, at an acting class because, you know, I, I, it was my first day at the acting class. Like, introduce yourself. You know, I gave him my spiel like, oh, yeah, and I do stunt stuff. And she came up to me immediately and said, you do stunt work. I want to learn stunt work. And we at the time had been playing with this concept of a, of a girl getting chased by like a slasher and then turning the tables. And I was like, you're, you're petite. You're very pretty. Like, this is exactly what we're looking for. And so I trained her for six months. She had never done any martial arts before Wow. Uh, for that movie. So we, we basically brought her up completely from scratch because that was my mentality. It's like, we have time. So let's, let's take the time. And so I didn't think we needed to undercrank because it's like, well, we'll just rehearse it until it's fast enough that it's as fast as we want it to be. Just keep rehearsing. But the new method that we've learned is uh, to undercrank for camera because it's a lot easier to rehearse for weeks and weeks. It's very hard to find a DP who's willing to work with you for free at all. And it's almost impossible to find a DP who's going to work with you for free. And you go, hey, do you want to do a week's worth of rehearsals every day for an hour? on this fight scene and they're like no i'm good so slow the fight scene down so they only really need like an hour to kind of like get it you know mm -hmm. they can basically kind of roll on rehearsals and find out what find their marks and then everything slows down a little bit mm -hmm. with that undercranking method and then you crank it back up 
for uh, for full speed. Do do you do you do the previous when you when you're there though with your phone or something when you just so we should for... so yeah we right what we're doing now is a hundred percent previs so when we shoot action mm -hmm. we are shot for shot uh, recreating the previs mm -hmm. so um, we'll go so far as to uh, we we do a previs at our studio like just we kind of try to approximate the location and then we we have our final previs when we're happy with that we'll go to the location and shoot the previs again on the location to make sure it works exactly how we need it to work this is this is for stuff i make uh, stuff that I get hired to do, especially around here in Nashville, no, no one's paying you to do all that. They want you there like the day before. We'll give you like two hours, rehearse with the actors, and then we're shooting tomorrow. So, you know, good luck. Um, <laughs> for, for our stuff, you know, we usually at a minimum, we'll do like a week. So we'll do like two or three hours of rehearsals to get the actors where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And then have a full day of just finding the previs, just kind of figuring out what we want that to look like, cut it together. We usually have to do a pickup on the previs. And this is why the previs is so important is because on the day of the previs, it never fails. I walk away from that previs and I go, good, we got it. We're done. We, that's our fight scene. And then I sit down and I edit and I go, ah, damn it, damn it, damn it. Just <laughs> one thing, another, after another, after another. And then fix all those mistakes by shooting a, like a pickup of the previs and then we'll go to the location and then usually the previs needs to be adjusted a little bit for the location mm -hmm. and, then, and then the shoots that way are so smooth because it you literally you take your phone out you show the dp here's here's your mark we're going to shoot this at 22 so we're going to go slow enough for you to keep up you go here then you go here and then you kind of then you kind of boom up with us that's it that's a cut and then the performers have a much easier time because they're not having to do the entire fight scene or like big chunks of the fight scene over and over and over and getting more and more tired and more likely to mm -hmm. just make mistakes or just not deliver the performance that everybody wants. It's like, I know I go one, two, three, four, cut. And then when the next cut happens, it's the rest of four, then five, six, seven, cut. Yeah. And then it's, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and you just, yeah, yeah. Just recreate, just recreate the yeah. previs, shot for shot, and it's so much smoother. It's so much smoother. Yeah. Do you did you find because one thing that was really standing out in in prey was, and it's amazing that you told me she never done anything. Yeah, she never done anything. That before. she did hit. The character cues very well. That that little moment when she puts the gum on behind her ear. By the way, <laughs> I haven't seen that nobody does that for years. I used to do it when I was a kid in Georgia, <laughs> and ever since, and I've never seen anybody that. Suddenly, somebody put a gum behind the ear so they can do whatever they do. So I never saw it. But that those little moments, so like character moments, yeah, those cues. Yeah were really well delivered and then the physicality of it came really well yeah. do, you, do you find that it's easier to train people that have experience in martial arts or do you in terms of like on screen fighting i'm not talking about just right. the, the, the fight itself but on screen fighting is definitely different than actual fighting the motion need to be a bit more sold less direct speed do you find it's easier to train people with the background or without the background i think there's pluses and minuses to both i think at the end mm -hmm. of the day like all things being equal generally it's easier to train people with martial arts backgrounds because there's a certain like physicality there's a certain kind of like way that you carry your body okay when you understand like violent sports uh that it's 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 difficult to teach. It takes kind of takes some time to teach. Um, yeah. Whereas if someone already has that, you've kind of crossed that off the list. You can kind of start getting into other stuff a lot faster. That being said, um, fighting for camera is very different than real fighting. Like off the top, uh, I remember when I first started learning how to fight, my coach made me uh, hold a tennis ball between my chin and my chest to always have my, my chin tucked. And he made me, constantly touch my fist to my cheekbone the problem with doing this is now the camera can't see your face 
I'm, yeah. I'm all hunched over. I'm creating all these hard shadows on my face and my fists in front of me. So I've been called out before by, by coordinators or by directors. When I start to get tired, my chin goes down and my fit, cause I just start going to like my instincts from all my days of fighting. And like, well, we couldn't use that take because we couldn't see your face. And I realized like, oh, I'm, I'm tired. And now all of my like fighting habits are, are creeping in. And, and so throwing punches for the camera is wildly different. I mean, if you want to throw like a good punch for camera, it is mechanically silly compared to like a quote unquote, like real, oh yeah, like the elbow out, like yeah. the coffee pot, like all that. There's all these little tricks that don't make any sense right. for actual physics, like violence, but they make sense for visuals. Um, the other factor of that is kind of this like X factor where if people have no martial arts training, they typically are open books, like hands in the air. Like I have no idea. You show me whatever you tell me. That's the gospel. Not all the time, but sometimes when you work with martial artists, there's a little bit of like, eh, that's not really how you do that. Or that's not how I would do that. Or, you know, there's a little bit more of like, which is understandable. I and mean, if I've done martial arts for 20 years and then some movie guy is like, nah, you're not doing that. Right. You're like, I think I'm doing it right. You know, so there's a little, there's a little bit of like a personality clash sometimes a, a little bit with that. Um, you know, for instance, I've seen with my seminars that I teach for actors, there's, it's usually like 60 or 70% females and 30, 40% males, which at first surprised me. Cause you'd think like, Oh, wouldn't the guys kind of be more interested in like, you know, fighting on camera. And uh, one of our other coordinators pointed out to me, he goes, all the guys already think they know how to fight. The girls are the ones that are like, oh, I have no idea. I've never been in a fight in my life. I, I don't have a clue. Yeah, teach me how to fight. I'd love to know. Whereas the guys kind of have this false confidence of like, I know how to throw a punch. I don't need to take this seminar. This is this is this is something I don't need to bother with, you know. <laughs> and then they get and then they get on set. I had I had that experience once, by the way. Uh, besides that colossal uh, craziness that I tried to do. I, I was doing this little shorts and we got this guy and I don't know if you're familiar with Krav Maga. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up in like I grew up in Georgia and then I moved to Israel. And um, so we bring this awesome, awesome dude and he's from the Krav Maga background, which is very, very direct. It's, it's yeah. direct and I will very hurt tough. you in my defense. While I'm defending, you're going to get hurt, okay? Right. I'm going to defend with my bone. I'm going to put my yeah, elbow yeah. so I can kick it. I want to destroy it. So bring out this guy and he's supposed to basically block. And there's two other guys. We already were bumps, just yeah. bumps of bumps. Yeah, yeah. bumps. Like we were like talking to him. Hey, man, now he's teaching stage fights because he got so good at it. He can teach right. it. But like those are the things that like I, I so relate to what you're saying. Sometimes it's very difficult to unlearn those little things. But yeah. you're right. It's, it's amazing how the mentality of somebody who knows how to fight affects your walk, your stance. Oh, your yeah. Absolutely. General uh, uh, body composition, I guess. Oh, yeah. It's very, it's very hard to teach. Um, uh, it's very hard to teach um, violent expression. Like I can show you the mechanics of how to throw a punch easily, very easily. And you'll probably, you'll, you'll learn that punch very quickly, but to learn how to throw it with violent intention mm -hmm. is a lot trickier. It's, it's a lot trickier. And then, then the next level to learn how to throw it with violent intention safely is extremely difficult. And then that's why, you know, fighting for camera and being like a stunt person becomes like a high paid job because um it's it's tr it's tricky you know one of the one of the compliments i started getting when i first started going out to atlanta and actually getting on like real legit sets and like working with actual coordinators and you know you go out there you're doing nothing you're, it's like oh you're gonna get hit they're, they're, that's it you just get hit fall down um and so one of the first things i started hearing was like uh, oh good reaction Good and I, I always thought that I was like, yeah, he just hit me. And I felt that like, what do you mean? Good reaction it was the simplest job in the world. And I started working with a lot of actors and I realized like, oh, I guess that is a skill. And I realized after professionally fighting for six years, I just inherently understood 
what it looked like to get punched in the face because I've been punched in the face so many times. And to try to explain that to someone who had never in their life been punched in the face was actually a lot harder than I ever would have thought it would have been. Also, there's that, A, there's that fear of getting punched because yeah. you've never been punched. All, and yeah. then there's that almost lack of fear because you've never been punched. So it's yes, like there's always yes, this this yeah, this this like weird weird situation where like you just gotta have a healthy respect. How am I supposed to feel? It, how am I supposed to feel? Am yeah, I supposed yeah. to be afraid of it? No, what's going on? My my acting acting uh, teacher used to say, always respect the gun. If there's a gun in the room, respect the gun, oh, respect yeah. the gun. Absolutely. Same thing with a punch. Always treat it like it's a real gun. And yeah, one of the things that I do with my stunt team is uh I we after we've gotten to like a certain level. I always try to I have them spar with me, not with each other because they you know if you're new, you can't really control what's happening. So I have them spar with me because I want them to understand this is what it feels like to get hit a little bit. We're sparring lightly, you know, just touching, touching, touching. But the difference that it makes after like a week or so of like these little sparring sessions because the fear leaves them because they've been hit like for real. like they've been hit like with intention. you know, I'm not hitting you hard, but I'm still, really trying to hit you and i hit you and then the fear of getting accidentally hit goes out the window because it's not it's not mysterious anymore yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. it maybe getting accidentally hit hurts even more than kind of this light sparring but now you have a baseline for what it feels like to be hit and it's not a mystery anymore you kind of you know what it's going to feel like it's going to feel yeah. like this but worse or maybe like not as bad but it's basically going to feel like this and so that to me at least i think that helps a lot It's amazing man I, I I feel like it's I don't know how to put it in proper words sometimes because I lose words in English but it's very important to have this knowledge and I, I, oh, yeah. I love movies I love yeah. movies I love action movies and I, I see sometimes well no it's it's less now. It's less now because well corridor is doing a great work with their oh, yeah uh, there's um stuntmans react yes and, yeah, yeah. Those uh, are cool. and um actually uh Scott Atkins has a great podcast talking about talking with a lot of stunt people and stunt yeah. coordinators and it's great to listen yeah. to like he's an amazing interviewer we're better than I am uh <laughs> but uh it's it's okay I'm, I'm learning uh but uh you All those things and I, I see all this information and I know that it can be applied not only just to the action but in general and to the approach to the cinema because the repetition gives you confidence and then once you have confidence in the repetition 90% goes well and the 10% might not go well but but you're so prepared that your yep. adaptability is so high and it's not only in action it's in general in filmmaking and I feel that this attitude and approach that you have, And, and knowledge is so lacking in in the scenery it's getting better in my opinion but I hope you know this is a, again I don't want to no no I, yeah no I appreciate it it's, you know it's funny man because it, it goes both ways like I am so mystified and terrified when it comes down when it like when it comes time to shot list not action but But I'm just I'm I'm like uh, uh, do we shoot this wide do we push in medium should the camera be moving should the camera be still do we put it on a dolly do we hand like the sheer number of options just completely overwhelms me but when it comes time to shoot action it's just yeah we're gonna shoot this close uh, obviously we want to get reaction from this there's not a lot of body movement uh, we're gonna pull out wide for this because there's gonna be a lot of footwork here and they're gonna be traveling so uh, let's have the camera handheld because we want a little bit of that like you know what I mean like like boom 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 everything's just like very simple like obvious like yep this is exactly how to do this not even thinking twice about it but then all of a sudden you know uh, two people are having a conversation and At the dinner table and I'm like I I will uh, should there be a shoulder in the frame do we dirty this up is it clean uh, do we push in on this line or you know what I mean it's all of a sudden I'm just lost you know it's funny it's yeah. just skill sets it's yeah yeah it's it's two different mediums and I think that's why learning both of them really assists so so what you didn't go so your film school was set time just learning. Yeah, I basically taught myself through necessity. We, um, 
I think I, I just got lucky because um, I wanted to make action and it, I couldn't find any like directors who um, could do the action like I wanted, if that makes any sense. Like, like not that I'm some kind of, you know, uh, anything special. It's just like I, I knew I knew what it was I wanted. You know, maybe it wasn't even that good, but this is exactly what I want. Uh, as far as the action goes and so yeah. i just reached a point where it's kind of similar to like with uh working with the actors in those seminars i realized it's going to be simpler to teach myself how to direct than it will be to find a director who is willing to shoot this action exactly like i want them to mm -hmm. and so you know it's just uh i just bit the bullet and just kind of put the work in and if there's anyone out there listening who wants to do something like that the number one piece of advice i can give is find yourself uh, a situation like a like location and performers that is as forgiving as possible like prize your access to the location over everything else shoot it in your living room if that's what it takes to have like access to this location and then shoot it with like your friends instead of like professional stunt people because create a situation for yourself where you go back and fix it over and over and over again. Because I think one of the problems is you, you, you take a swing at something, you get into the editing room and you go, ah, crap, I messed this up. And then the whole experience is negative because that was it. I had my shot. I tried, I messed it up. Like, all right, I guess I'll start over and I'll probably mess up the next one. Whereas if you shoot like in a parking garage, a public parking garage that you can kind of go to, during the right hours, you can go there whenever you want. Uh, for every for every film that I've put out that I'm like satisfied with, it, it took like so many so many times to go back and fix it. Fix this. We got to fix that. We got we got to reshoot this. I mean, the goal. I one I one day want to be a good enough filmmaker to do all this stuff in the first pass. But I'm realistic with myself that I'm not there right now. So, create a situation for yourself where you can just keep going back and fixing the thing it is that you're doing until it's roughly what it is you want it to be and then move on to the next project. Uh, because that was a huge help for me is seeing the problem, fixing the problem over and over and over again, over the course of like a month, you know, something that should have been one weekend worth of shooting turns into like three weekends of shooting to get like the final product, but at least I'm happy with the final product. <laughs> yeah. 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 Accessibility and repetition. Yeah. 100%. Like you will, I uh, want to tell people two things, two things that are universal. Uh, do you swear on this podcast? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the two Come things on. I tell people, you will fuck up. You're going to fuck <laughs> this up. Like you're 100% convinced you thought of everything. You did. You, you forgot something. Something's not going to work. So be realistic about that and account for it and create a situation where you can go fix the inevitable fuck up. And the other thing that I tell people, and this is kind of where it gets tricky is like if you're progressing as an artist martial artist or artist artist anything you should look back at things that you've done previously like i go back and watch some of my first fights the same way i go back and watch my first movie and my reaction is the same i go ugh, ugh. Like, <laughs> so at a certain point you kind of just have to walk away from it you know what i mean like i could watch those movies and be like ooh, ooh, if i just got like these three or four shots all of my issues with this would be fixed but that's in the past now. I shot that last year. Like I was happy with it. I was satisfied with it at the time. Let's move on. So always yeah. just be prepared. And that's another problem too, is like these guys, they sink, you know, even just like a thousand dollars into this idea that they have for their first short film. And I'm like, bro, you're going to hate it. Like you will hate it. I, love, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I will bet every penny I earn for the rest of my life. You're going to fucking hate that movie. <laughs> So don't spend any money on it. Like you're yeah. just spending money on something that you're going to hate. So shoot something that's free, ideally, or at least just like super easy and affordable. Get the experience. And hopefully, like hopefully a year from now, you hate it. Because that means you got that much better after a year of filmmaking. If you can still go back and look at something you made three, four years ago, and they're like, yeah, nailed it. It's like, oh, have, yeah. that's you haven't learned yeah. anything new. There's nothing you've yeah. learned that you wish you could have applied to that movie. You may, I mean, I made Prey two years ago, and I mean, my God, I would have changed like seventy percent of that movie right now. I would have done yeah. so many. Yeah, 
No, it's yep. it's it's you said something very 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 true. It's very difficult to accept it. Yeah. Like the ability to go back. So my my friend who's also from like a concert tells me if you if you go back at the, what you did even a year ago and you like it in a way that like okay and you wouldn't change anything you haven't learned anything right uh, yeah. because a nobody does anything perfectly and I'd say I would, I'm going with Kubrick here 75 percent I'm good above 75 percent it's like amazing yeah. so and I, you never reach 100 that's why like what you when you said you cannot do it even the first time because that's why you have first and second and third and fifth and ninth takes yeah that's the whole thing it's not maybe you can do it in lesser time but nobody does it in the first time and that's it's so it's so smart you have to look back and see how far you've come and know how what you've learned but again you you're talking about ego here and that's oh yeah yeah that's that's, huge that's huge that's very big and sometimes you gotta you gotta take the blows and if you can't yeah, take the blows, don't be in film. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And I think, I think acting kind of uniquely prepared me for that. Cause I mean, acting is just, it's 99 no's and then another 99 no's and then maybe one yes. And then like 300 more no's. I mean, it's just yeah. rejection, 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 rejection. And so, you know, if you make a movie and someone's like, that sucks, it's just like, Oh, this is the, one millionth time i've heard someone tell me i suck because I'm, I'm an actor <laughs> i get nothing but no's so yeah all right whatever that's fine i'll keep cracking away at it. it's just to me it's like making movies is like auditioning just keep auditioning and you'll eventually you know you'll get something that you want yeah. and keep keep like create a situation where making a movie is fun most importantly and then easy second most importantly and then if it's fun and easy why wouldn't you just keep doing it over and over and over again? I mean, there's no, I mean, you, if you're having fun and it's not difficult, then just make, you know, make a movie every month. If, if that's what you have the time to do and that's how you get better. It's just, you know, just yeah. doing it over and over again. It's like martial arts. People, people very rarely become masters of a martial art that they hate. It's they, they fell in love with a martial art. They love to do it. And it was just fun. And then all of a sudden, 10 years later, they look back and they go, oh, shit, I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm really good at it. That's crazy. <laughs> the, I, I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's a big part of it where I, where, where, I, where I agree with you. But there's also like many things that we both probably have done. And that first six, seven, eight, nine weeks, we don't really get it. And suddenly at the ninth week, something clicks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And you're like, oh, shit, I get it. Yeah. And then oh, you, yeah. You, you, yeah, so no, but, I, you're, you're right. No, you're hundred percent right. You have to get over that like self doubt hump. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, we, Oh my God, we shot something last weekend and I looked at the dailies and was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I even doing this? Like what, like, <laughs> like you can't like, I, I, how is it possible that this is this bad? And I've been doing this for, for, you know, how many years? I mean, so there's always going to be those moments where you kind of like, you have to question yourself. You go like, ah, this isn't for me. You know, like, ah, oh, this is miserable. I hate this. Everything sucks. And then you just got to push through. You know, there's that, uh, you got to be the actor. You got to hear, you got to hear a thousand no's from yourself sometimes, not just from other people. Yeah. And you just got to like put the blinders on and just keep going, you know, just remind yourself you enjoy doing it ultimately. And so you should just keep doing it. My producer says every, every no is another step towards the yes. 100%. Absolutely. <laughs> That's 100% true. All right. Four questions. Yep. One of them okay. you already answered. All right. So, favorite action film, third action star or okay. actor or performer. Sure. Uh, favorite action scene, we already said that it's uh, probably Atomic Blonde and Mr. Nobody. Wow. And uh, one, of, one of my favorite questions is, which is, um, I think I'm, for now, I'm the un undisputed king of it. Uh, most obscure action movie that nobody watched that you love? Oh boy, Oof. I I'm not yeah I'm not gonna be a great one for that. I think my <laughs> most like a big budget Hollywood film that you know was released in February instead of the summer. Um, ooh, okay, all right. So favorite action star? 
I mean, it's an easy answer. It might make some people's eye roll, but it's got to be Tom Cruise. The stuff that he does is just like, I mean, there won't be another guy like him. We, we haven't had a guy like him for a long time. There's not going to be another guy like him again for a long, long time. And the, the stuff that he does, I mean, the dedication that he has to the genre of action is just, it's, I mean, there's no words for it. There, there, there won't be another guy to match him, guy or girl. There won't be another guy or girl to match him for a very long time, if ever. I mean, the stuff that he's doing for Top Gun, the stuff that he's done for uh, the Mission Impossible films, it, it's just leaves me speechless. You know, that guy, that guy's incredible. I mean, he, he is, he is, I, I wouldn't even necessarily say a modern day because I don't think their ages are that different. So I will say he is, he is the United States answer to Jackie Chan. So China, Hong Kong, they have Jackie Chan. We have Tom Cruise. I mean, it's two kind of different things, but that same unbelievable. I would, I would agree with that. I would okay. agree with that. Favorite action film. Um, you know what's funny? My favorite action film is probably not even that heavy on the action, but it's one of my favorite movies ever is uh, Sicario. It's uh, oh. Din yeah, Dennis Villeneuve. Villeneuve? Villeneuve. I don't know. I think it's Villeneuve. 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 Yeah, there's, there's a couple. Yeah, a couple good shootouts. There's a uh, there's some some tussles in there. Uh, definitely some action. You know, it's a kind of an action themed movie, but good lord, I mean the execution on that movie and just like it was early it was early enough where i don't think people really appreciated that director working with roger deakins working with a script by that writer sam sheridan i mean what what an incredible trio uh, i mean sam sheridan was still early in his career and dennis dennis was still early i think that was like one of his like third big budget films that he followed that was after prisoners yeah yeah, yeah so I mean, was 215 yes yeah, so that was like his kind of first like um popular like big budget films so i think even prisoners was, was a little bit like a like a niche kind of thriller at the time but yeah i mean if you told someone right now that sam sheridan was writing a script that dennis felt that dennis villeneuve was going to direct and then roger deakins was going to dp it i mean my god and then the cast just the cast was incredible um so my favorite obscure action movie oof ah uh, <laughs> i'm trying yeah i'm sitting here scrambling trying to think uh i don't think i can think of one that's not like a major release but maybe just like an underappreciated major i don't I think Warrior, you know, I'm biased. I'm an MMA guy. I, I always tell people Warrior is like a like a C plus, like a B minus film. But as far as MMA movies go, it's fucking Citizen Kane. I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's like no, there's nothing. There, there's, there's not nothing been an MMA movie. movie better than that. And it came out yeah. the same time Red Belt came out oh, with yeah. uh, Chatwala Gia 4. And I'm like, I'm watching it. And it's like, it's it's a good film. It's not a good MMA film. Right, hundred percent. Like the Holly Berry movie came out on Netflix. I got I get I, I got like I thirty. Yeah, I got thirty minutes into that. I was like, uh, I, it's like <laughs> how do they they still don't know how to make MMA movies? Um, <laughs> so maybe Warrior, just in terms of like an underappreciated uh, action film. That's Gavin Hood. Now I know Gavin. Oh, Hood, okay. Gavin Hood directed Warrior. Gareth there Thales, we go. Eric, right. yeah, here we go. Full circle. Oh my god. <laughs> the callback. Dude, it was it was great talking to you. Yeah. Like, you, have, you have so much knowledge and so much to Dude, give likewise. And, and I cannot wait to see what you do next. And Dude, likewise, can... man. Absolutely. Let's stay in touch for sure. I'd, I'd love to see more stuff you got going on. And um, if people need to get in touch with you, what would be the best way to do so? Uh, so on uh, Instagram, that's my main thing is, uh, it's just J E R O N B R A Y Jaron Bray. And then, uh, our website is stuntsnashville.com. It's where you can see all the work that we've done as our, our videos, our, uh, shorts get released. They'll get posted on the website and then the updates will get posted on the, uh, on the Instagram. Thanks, man. Thank oh, you dude. so much. I appreciate it. Ooh.